Hello everyone, welcome to valuetrainings.com. So now we'll be discussing the requirements or the goals of building the data-driven framework. Now, first of all, you should be able to read the data from the Excel file or the configuration file, right? Now look, there are two types of data available with us. The one type of data is one which changes frequently over a period of time. And the second type of data is one which never changes or if a change happens, it happens after a very long time. Say for example, the regular data of the website like the username and the password or your regular testing data which frequently changes. And then we have a data like for example, the URL of the website or the title of the web page, the data that might change over a period of time, but not every time. Right, so we have got two sets of data with us. The data which changes very frequently is kept in the Excel file or the XML file. And the another type of data is kept in the configuration file. Right, so in this framework, we have to make provisions for both of them. All right, say so for example, I have this data with me which I have like in the in this I have taken three to four different test cases and arranged the data like this. All right. And every set of data has a run mode column, which signifies whether the test has to be executed with certain set of data or not. For example, this create lead test. I have this I have four sets of data with me for this create lead test but it will be executed only once since the run mode is set to yes and it will not be executed for the other set of data since the run mode is set to no for all of them. All right, so I have taken the Zogo.com website and built the framework, it's a CRM project. All right, and then if I look into my project, the second set of data comes from the configuration file where I have kept the path where the reports would be generated, the, what is the URL of your website, the environment that you are running on. If the environment is the production's environment, then we have different login credentials for it. Or if else it is the UAT environment, then we have different login credentials to log you into your account. Then grid, grid run is set to yes. That means I want to run my project on the grid. If I make it to no, then that means I don't want to run my project on grid, right? So with just minimum changes, you can put up the maximum output. And then we have the various locators with us in this configuration file, the XPaths, IDs and all everything. All right. And then we can also keep the title of the web page or the static text, which, which has to be changed that you can keep everything in this configuration file even the path of your excel file the chrome driver.exe file path the ie driver.exe file path so the various things we can just keep it over here inside this configuration file right and then next we need to implement the various test cases and do the validations and all everything we'll look into that as well all right then comes the report generation now there are two types of reports xslt reports and the extent reports Extend reports are more famous these, these days. We'll give you an example. All right, uh, say for example, I have this report folder with me. Every time we run a program, new report is generated based on the timestamp. Say for example, this is the example of the extent report. I have a various test cases over here listed in this uh, report. As you can see, the create lead test is, that, is, is executed four times one of it is passing and the other three are skipped then similarly login test one is passing and the another one is skipped then the delete lead test is probably failing and then if you open any of the test case we can see the various logs for that particular test case that what like that what happened at what point of time it is first of all opening the browser then navigating to the browser then navigating to that particular url then trying to log in with the username and password clicking on the login button and all everything you can just judge it through the various logs that we have kept in the configuration file and if say suppose your test case is failing then in the end we have the screenshot as well of the error message in the reports 
right so this is a very good report as we all can see and then you can even switch over to some like to the other view of the report as well which is more presentable okay and then we can even switch to the dashboard as well where we can get the diagrammatic representation of the test cases along with the description as well that was like the timestamp when the test cases got started and when the test cases ended all right so moreover we have one more type of report that is the xslt report which is not very effective i'll just show you this is one of the xslt reports that we have for this particular project only but we can use this as well in the extent reports we don't have the detailed description of every test cases all right and then the screenshots embedding is also not easy in the xslt reports so extent reports are more better but we have sh uh, we have shown how to build both the reports in the uh, framework building okay and also putting the uh, logs and all in the reports and the screenshots everything we have covered in the framework all right and then implementing the project on the grid running the test cases parallelly on multiple machines we will also see that as well uh, all right that is we have a single hub and to that hu single hub we have connected multiple nodes say for example if we look into our project over here we have the configuration files in this project that is the grid.txt file then the two uh, json file the three json files hub.json file and node 1 and node 2.json file right so i have created one hub and to this hub two nodes are connected to it two nodes means the two pcs are connected to this single hub which is known as the main machine and we've connected other machines to this hub which are known as the nodes so we'll see how to run the test cases parallelly on the uh, grid and then these are the configuration files that we have included in our project in order to implement the grid in the project so we'll do everything we'll cover the grid implementation as well in the framework all right then reusability and flexibility and implementing the test cases is very important you should have the reusable component in the framework you should not repeat your code all right so we'll use the inheritance and we have the base test class as well which contains lot of reusable functions inside it and flexibility should also be there in your framework for example if something changes tomorrow in the application for example we can take the example of the xpaths the majority of the xpaths might change tomorrow so that is why we keep all the locators in this configuration file so we keep everything at a common location and the variable things like the xpaths and also what happens is that say suppose the other test cases which have been executed so all the test cases they can just access the xpaths they can read the xpaths ids and all everything from this con from this common location that is the configuration file so if change happens tomorrow we we'll just have to make the changes in this configuration file which really becomes easy for us to make changes all right so we we'll just have to say for example we we'll, we have to change the uh, path of the excel file or the path of the report file so we can just make the changes in this configuration file and that would be accessible to all the other members okay and then we should be able to run the project on different environments and then and then that we have set in the configuration file that is according to the environment you want to run your project on we have the different login credentials to login into the account all right and then we have to integrate the project with the jenkins and how can you schedule the test cases very important we have integrated this framework with the jenkins and shown it as well and then you can even schedule the test cases that is say suppose you want to run your project every week or every month then how it can be done we, we will see that as well and then emailing the reports again very important after the script has been executed the reports are generated you want to email it as well to all the team members so we have the send mail dot class with us in the framework which will send an email to all the team members all right and then in the end your code should be easy to change because if you are actually having changes in the real website then it should not be like that that it cannot change easily or taking lot of time to change it so that is why we build the core framework first this framework is such a way that it can be integrated with any website 
So firstly, we will build the core framework, which will be having all the features inside it. Like for example, uh, we'll initialize the configuration file, the generic functions, the validation functions, how to read the data from the Excel file, the report generation, putting the screenshots and all everything in the report file and everything will just will just cover in the core framework first and then you will integrate it with any website like we have taken the zoho.com website so if you have a project then you can integrate with that particular project all right so this is how we will be making the data driven framework